Hey, this is Tim Belcher and welcome to my shop. My son plays hockey and he's on a select team. We had a game this morning at 8.30, it's now noon, and our team dinner is tonight about 6.30. I was thinking about making some plaques for the coaches as a thank you gift. I've done this once before out of Walnut. I looked around my shop and I have some cutoffs of that ambrosia maple table I made in the last video. It's not necessarily my wood, I think I'm gonna steal it. I'm gonna measure this out, go in and design a quick plaque and get to cutting. This is definitely gonna be a one day build. So hopefully there's enough time to do this. The carving should take about an hour. I've got some sanding, some paint, some finish work to do by dinner. So let's make some thank you gifts out of some ambrosia maple. This is how I made it. So I mentioned during the intro that I had done this project once before. Here's that example from a few years ago. While that walnut's nice, I think this worm-ridden piece of colored ambrosia maple will make a very nice present. And unfortunately, I don't have any copies of that original design. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to walk you through my process start to finish. And that starts with importing the team logo into Vectric. I use Aspire, but nothing I'm doing in this video is different than if you had the regular version of Vectric. And what you see me doing here is playing with the trace settings to see what kind of detail I can get out of this color image. And if I had more time, I certainly would have done some more prep work on this image. I would have likely taken it into an image editor and converted it into an indexed grayscale image with perhaps 12 to 16 different shades of gray. I find that typically gets me the best results when I'm doing image tracing. I can select different shades to get different aspects of the image to show up more prominently. And as you can see here, I'm getting a good start, but I'm missing some of the details in that hockey stick. I'm missing some of the features of the tape on the bottom left and the handle on the top right. I'll speed this section up, but what I'm doing here is playing with some of the trace options, some of the different colors, looking for a balance between all the detail I need and how clean my vectors are after the trace. I would try various settings, throw them into a V-carve, and look at the quality of the carve and the render, back up, try different settings, I know at this point, based on the low quality of the actual logo, that I'm gonna to have to do quite a bit of cleanup on the vectors themselves. And at this point, I believe I've found that balance, so I'm gonna bring in a new image, do that trace, and begin the somewhat tedious process of smoothing out those vectors. And I'm using the node editing feature within Vectric to both move nodes, to remove some of the jagged areas, and to better shape the curves. I'll frequently use the render of the carve, go back and adjust things in the logo, such as the R in the middle and that D in the middle of the word Raiders. And after about 30 minutes, I'm getting close to something I'm happy with. And now I'll add a little bit of customization, a name curve to match the logo at the top and the actual team and year at the bottom. And you can see how that renders out here. And at this point, I'll add a box around to create a profile and play with the fillets. I believe at the top, I ended up with a two inch fillet and at the bottom, a quarter inch fillet. And we have a plaque. I went out and measured the stock up to this point. I'd actually been guessing. And I could take the actual measurements in, adjust the stock, shrink the vectors and duplicate it so that I could get two plaques out of each piece of stock. And lastly, the stock is 1.3 inches thick and the wood is fairly heavy, dense. I wanted some substantial tabs to keep the stock in place while it was being cut. This lumber was S3S, cutoffs from lumber that was planed on both sides and one edge. So I'm securing that flat side as well as one of the edges that I used on the miter saw with some horizontal flat clamps. And then I'm gonna use some pocket hole screws to hold down both edges. 
I'm using a quarter inch four flute down cut bit for both the V-Carve pocket operation and the profile work. The V-Carve pocket operations were very quick. And then we're switching out to the half inch 60 degree V bit for the actual V-Carve. Here I make a simple mistake. I'm gonna zero out this V bit far too close to the left edge of the stock. And in doing so, I'm assuming that my stock is perfectly flat. I either made a mistake zeroing my Z somehow, or this particular piece of stock was a few thousandths thinner on the right and the top than it was that bottom left corner. To fix this, I re-ran the V-carve operation with Z set to about five thousandths lower. And after that second pass, the carve came out fine. And then I switched back to that same down cut quarter inch bit for the profile pass. And from here, it was a bit of a rinse and repeat for the third and fourth plaques. And while those two were being milled, I got to work on the first set. On the first piece of stock, my depth in the profile pass was not quite deep enough, but nothing that a little gentle persuasion with a chisel and mallet couldn't fix. And off to the belt sander to clean up those tabs, do a first pass at those sides, and relieve some of those sharp edges. A little bit of hand sanding quickly cleans up any burrs left by the V-bit. I use my palm sander with a fairly high grit to clean up those sides. I do have a detail sander that would have been much easier to handle and use in this situation, but at this time I was really feeling pressed for time to finish this project before dinner. And then use the air compressor to get rid of any dust, as well as use the tack cloth. It's about 3.40, I've got about two, two and a half hours left, and I'm at the point where I can paint and finish. What I'd love to do is spray a clear coat over this thing first before I put the color into the actual carving. That would help me in bleeding and also sanding it back off. I don't have time, I'm gonna to have to go straight to the blue. Hopefully it won't bleed, this is a fairly hard wood, so we'll see what happens. With the paint, I really wanted to make sure that I got down into even the shallow crevices, so my first coat was fairly straight on. I then put another coat of paint from each of the four sides to make sure that I fully covered anything that was carved from all directions. And because of that time crunch, long before the blue paint had a chance to cure, I actually flipped the plaques upside down to give a clear coat to the back. And for the first time we get to see how beautiful this wood is with a clear coat on it. I mentioned briefly that my last project was a full dining room table using this same ambrosia maple. I'll leave a link in the description down below. The backs cured fairly quickly, but that was not the case for the front. A fairly thick coat, and it was about 38 degrees outside. And I eventually got them cured enough to give sanding a try. Although I quickly realized I needed a more secure way to clamp these down and sand them. And there was one final session of hand sanding and cleanup before I could move on to using an enamel clear coat. And my favorite part of almost any project is the finish stage, especially these colored carvings. Not only do you see the wood and the grain patterns pop, but the carving takes on a lot more detail and color with a clear coat. And there you have it, five and a half hours start to finish for four thank you gifts. It's a small token of my appreciation for all the effort they put into the team this year. If you like this video or found it helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.